Hello, everybody, and welcome to Real Madrid Hub. I am your host, Eric Rivera, and this is, of course, your spot for all things Real Madrid news. Um, as you know, this is a channel that is uh, by my good friend, J Real Madrid, and myself. J Real Madrid actually has two channels. He's got um, J Real Madrid, and he's got Dr. J, where he does pretty much like six, seven daily videos about what's going on in the news, rumors, transfers, everything that's going on in the news around Real Madrid in Spanish. Um, definitely check him out. But he also started this channel to start talking about Real Madrid news in English. I mean, we're trying to get the information directly from the best sources in Spain, you know, whether that's Cadena Ser, Marca, As, sometimes El Chiringuito, you know, but there's things that are always going to float around. Some are going to be reliable, some are not. So we always try to drill it down. And uh, if it's a rumor, it's a rumor. If it's true, it's true, you know, whatever. We'll try to break it down for you. But, uh, you know, we feel like there's is sometimes, at least on YouTube, there's a lack of uh, there's not a lot of news that comes out. There are a couple good podcasts, of course, that talk about Real Madrid, but there's not sort of a daily news source for Real Madrid. So we're trying to help you out and bring you some of that um, directly from the news in Spain. Uh, with that said, um, I also have my podcast. Check it out. Inada Mas podcast that is available everywhere. Um, we've been on a hiatus for two weeks because I got COVID and my family was sick. So I had to basically keep, you know, everybody isolated and away from the podcast and everything in order to make sure that we, you know, we got through that. It sucked. It was a like a really, really bad flu. It's no joke. Um, some people get symptoms, some don't. I was one of the people that got symptoms. My wife did. My kids did not. Um, but uh, everything's good now. So we are back to our regular schedule. So with that said, today has been a very Sergio Ramos centric day. You know, um, everything today was revolving around what was Sergio Ramos going to say about his renewal. Um, now, to be clear, of course, today there was no, um, today the he was going to have a press conference, but the press conference was not about um, his renewal. The press conference was essentially about his Amazon Prime series, which here where I am, it's called El Corazón de Sergio Ramos. I think I saw something that said La Leyenda de Sergio Ramos. I don't know if they're going to change the name. But so basically, it's a docu series. It was already had it already had one season on Amazon Prime. He was promoting the second season on Amazon Prime, and so really, that's what it was. That that's what the conference was about. However, obviously, you know, the media was going to talk to him about different things right now, and of course, we were waiting to hear if he was going to mention making men any mention of his renewal. So some of the things that stood out. Um, oh, and before that, he also actually after the press conference with um you know the press conference uh about M the amazon prime series he had an interview with uh internet celebrity ibayanos who's a you know gamer uh youtuber twitch you know star basically and has his own show on streaming uh and i thought that was a really really good interview a lot of good stuff came out of that and uh it was very interesting and i want to talk about that as well for those of you that couldn't see it or if you did see it didn't understand you know or don't speak spanish but there was a lot of really good stuff it was an hour long so it's really interesting to kind of bring some of that stuff up but talking about the press conference you know he basically talked about being back with the team said that he would like to help them by having great performances there are titles in play champions league obviously and la liga are still in play i would like to win them and dedicate them to the fans um talking about himself he says i do not want to be just another football player um and that is why i try to be the best in my position every year um he is of course getting older but he talks about that he hopes that he can show that he's gonna that he's still in top form and that he can remain in this form for a long time and continue to break records um he also said that in football now this quote was attributed to him but he clarified later in football there are no young or old players there are good and bad players and he said that santiago bernabeo was the one that had said that essentially there are no young or old it's really about being good or bad um and i think essentially you know 
whether a player can um, maintain a certain amount of fitness or maintain a certain level of competitive competitiveness, which is something that we've seen, which is so for me, at least in my opinion, uh, the things that we've seen from Messi and Ronaldo being able to maintain this amazing run of form for, you know, going way past 10 years now. Um, and that is what makes you legendary. And essentially Sergio Ramos is among those names as well. And he also spoke about uh, Ibrahimovic. You know, these guys are those guys that are in a lot of ways timeless. They'll eventually, obviously, uh, end their careers. But uh, for them to be so consistent for so long, that is what I think makes a legendary player. And uh, I think Sergio Ramos as well on his way to well, already uh, be one of those players that is mentioned in the likes of uh you know with messi and ronaldo and some of the greats obviously not as a goal scorer but as a world-class defender um he was talking you know they he spoke about var especially um talking about var after the situation with hernandez hernandez not giving uh real madrid the penalty in the derby which looked like a penalty which looked like a clear penalty uh but he said the most intelligent thing to do is avoid talking about referee decisions they can make mistakes I have always been in favor of VAR. The referees deserve the same respect that is given to players. Let's show them our support so they can do their jobs. Being very diplomatic, as we all know, Sergio Ramos has had his run-ins with refs over the years and um, has been a hothead. But if you're a Madridista, you love him for being the hothead and for his passion. So um, I think he's just trying to avoid any sort of controversy there. Um, he talked about, you know, his toughest rivals and essentially brought up Guardiola's Barca as marking an era and that they were Real Madrid's most difficult rival. Uh, he said that playing in Clásicos is satisfying and is always a reward for the hard work that you put in training. Um, he also said that his references, he was asked about, you know, who were the players he looked up to or um, the, the references, his, his referencias in his career. Um, and he spoke about Hierro, Ronaldo, no, Ronaldo Nazario, uh, Canilla, uh, Rivaldo, Pablo Alfaro, Prieto, Paolo Maldini, of course, um, are those the guys that have in, inspired him in a lot of ways through his career. And, you know, I mean, we've already seen that he's been mentioned with the names of, of guys, you know, like Baresi and Nesta and, and, and Maldini as being among, you know, the best defenders. Beckenbauer, you know, uh, is another one, of course. Um, and he's up there for in my opinion as well he's up there and, and he's already been placed up there um going back to barca he said that aside from you know getting the three points when you beat barca the satisfaction really lasts all year um i always try to keep my banter to the minimum on this thing um but it's really hard to do when barcelona fans are annoying i guess <laughs> um so you know i try to keep it at a minimum but it's hard to do and, and it's football you know we laugh at them uh you know for their getting eliminated one day and they'll laugh at us getting eliminated the next day um you know it is what it is that's what football is and that's kind of what makes it fun and being a fan so at the end of the day though here it is he was asked about you know his renewal and his statement was essentially there is a lot of speculation about the information that has come out about my future all i can say is that there is nothing new and regarding my renewal, there is no news that I could comment on. I wish there was. Um, I, w I was left with, he said in Spanish, ya me gustaría, or I would really like to, and essentially kind of saying, I would really like to have news for you, but I don't have it right now. Um, I kind of was a positive tone. So my feeling in all this um, is one of, of uh, positivity, but I'll go into what was said you know in his discussion with Ibai Yano so with with Ibai um you know speaking with Ibai it it was a really cool interesting um interview and what I liked about it and what I think stands out to me about the interview with Ibai was really that it's really interesting to see how media has evolved in a way and and what I mean by that is you could see that you know, one of the things they touched on, and I'm not going to go over the whole interview, of course, but one of the things they touched on, which I thought was really interesting um, for all of you guys that have podcasts out there, that have YouTube channels, that have, you know, Twitter pages talking about, you know, 
news from Madrid or whatever your favorite team is, it really doesn't matter. The interesting thing to me was how he talked about, you know, that news and we we've heard of this, you know, news nowadays is, is has always kind of has an agenda. And, you know, we've seen that if if you follow the Spanish media, Marca and Diario As and Diario Madridista and, um, uh, you know, of course, you know, Barcelona centric outlets like Sport and Mundo Deportivo, um, they all sort of have an agenda. And the agenda is either you're anti-Madridista, you're Madridista, you're anti-culé or you're culé, you know, so there's always an agenda. So he, he was kind of talking about how he doesn't like giving interviews because he by asked him why he doesn't do many interviews. And he said it because there's always feels like you go on one of these shows and there's an agenda. There's a reason. There's something that somebody wants to talk about. You know, somebody wants to talk about something and they're going to extrapolate and try to take little pieces of what you say uh, in order to favor one agenda or the other. Um, I mean, we've seen it, you know, with the messy situation, uh, whether, you know, what is he trying to say? Is he trying to say he doesn't want to be with Barcelona um, or that he's not a Barcelona fan or he's no longer wants to be with the club? Or is he just saying he had an issue with, let's say, the the, the directiva, you know, the board? Um, if Sergio Ramos, you know, likes a picture of Mbappe, does that mean he's going to PSG? If, um, you know, Di Maria gives Messi a hug after the game, does that mean, you know, so it's all this analysis to try to paint a picture that you truly don't know. You know, the only people that really know, and that's what Sergio Ramos was talking about, was the players themselves. You know, they're the only ones that really know their own intentions, you know, and everybody else is trying to extrapolate and take little sound bites to sort of get that entertainment value and push things in a direction. And uh, it definitely shows that he wasn't a fan of that, but that he was a fan of going on a show with Ibai Llanos, who was essentially a, you know, an internet celebrity, a talking head like, like I am right now. Obviously, I don't have that same amount of following. But what's interesting is this opens for a lot of us that do these, you know, things like this. It opens a lot of possibilities for all of you guys that do podcasts and news to really think about, you know, sometimes these players might be more interested in talking with people like the fans than people that aren't going to judge them so much um, and are really just going to be happy to be able to hear from their favorite players. And that's what it seems like uh, Sergio Ramos was alluding to. And I thought that was really interesting because the conversation was very open and it was very, you know, fun and it was very, a, a really cool look at essentially the players to showcase what he wanted to showcase is like, you know, we're just like everybody else. We're players, you know, we're soccer players, but we're football players, but we are just like any other person. You know, we have families, we have lives, we have things that don't revolve around, uh, revolve around the game. And, you know, sometimes we just don't want to be asked the same questions. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, about his renewal, about this or that, uh, you know, you're who, you know, I guess things throughout his whole career, but th that stood out to me the most. And what stood out to me is that he talks so well um, about Madrid, talks so lovingly about the team and about his experiences with Madrid. Obviously, he talks um, a lot about Sevilla, of course, because that was the team that he says is always going to be in his heart because it's, it's the team that is essentially of his hometown. But what, what was interesting to me the most is that it it seemed to me that his whole demeanor he seemed very happy, he seemed very calm. Um, he didn't go into any sort of things uh, about his renewal or but bad mouthing Madrid or Florentino or Zidane. If anything, he was very, very, um, very, very, I would say, uh, Madridista, you know, everything we expect from him. Well-spoken, talking about, you know, his time with Madrid and how much he's loved his time with Madrid and what he wants to do as a player and what drives him and what motivates him. Um, you know, it was all a very candid, a very candid um, interview that showed somebody that I think in a lot of ways has his mind made up. And I feel like his mind made up is that I at least think that he's going to stay at Real Madrid. I think he's very happy with where he is. It seems like he was very happy. He was very happy in Madrid with his family and, and with football. And, um, you know, he's somebody who is very much, um, I would say, uh, very interested in, in representing Spain. And he talks about La Liga and, um, 
how a lot of times, you know, there are a lot of great players in La Liga that are overlooked, you know, when asked about Mbappe and Haaland, you know, being the new stars, you know, he was like, I think there are a lot of great players in La Liga as well that, you know, we don't talk about and that maybe we take for granted because essentially he was talking about people who live in Spain and they see things, they see the same players constantly. So they always look outside for, you know, the bigger, the big stars, you know, um, but uh, you could see that he's a very, uh, definitely a very, very, uh, he's a Madridista at heart, very passionate. His leadership shines through. And, and once again, for me, this kind of cemented, like I was thinking I would be, after, before this, I was thinking I'm already done with the whole Sergio Ramos debacle. I hope he decides whether he leaves or stays. I don't care, whatever. And honestly, I want the guy to stay because I think he brings something that is so different to Real Madrid. It's not only his leadership, it's his passion, it's his experience. Um, it's his love for the game. It's his drive. It's all very contagious. Um, and, you know, we know he, he spoke about how he's really good friends with Luka Modric. And we've seen what an what an inspiration Luka Modric is as well in the game. Um, so and then he talked about Haaland and Mbappe. And he just said, you know, that um, I think what all of us know. But for me, really, it's that Haaland is the better choice out of the two financially. Um and in this moment in their careers, because Mbappe is going to be way too expensive for uh, Real Madrid in this current market. Um, he's already a star. He's already somebody, and you would be paying for all of that. Where Haaland is still just not quite there yet, you know. So um, he's still just about to jump into that level. Now, obviously, we have to see how he, you know, things turn out with Borussia Dortmund. Not only in the Champions League, but of course in Bundesliga, where. They are not currently, they're currently in sixth place and they are currently not going to qualify for the Champions League if they don't get out of sixth place. Um, so that will make a lot, very big difference on how much he's going to be cost or how much he's going to cost for Real Madrid. But, um, you know, so he said that he was very much uh, interested in having somebody like Haaland to come to Real Madrid. And, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, asked about projects, I think talking about Messi and things like that. Um, how you know players look at projects and want to win titles he seemed very uh you know happy and he seemed like he wants to continue at real madrid in my opinion that's what i got from it i think uh, we're going to see him stay now that is just my opinion um they also one thing i think that was funny was they asked him if there was any amount of money in the world that they could pay him to play for barcelona and he said there are just things that money can't buy and they're just things that you don't do you know and um, so for him, it was no chance of ever going to Barcelona. He, ha he they were asked if like if somebody if they brought Messi to Real Madrid, would he do it? And he said of a hundred percent. You know, I would even I would even give my house if he needed a house in Madrid. I would even give him my house to, while he's making you know the arrangements to move to Madrid. But he knows that that's obviously not a possibility. There's just there are players that you associate with these teams. You know. He had great words to say about Xavi and, of course, Iniesta and Piqué, people that he shared this, you know, amazing Spanish national team with who are Barcelona players. Um, and you would never imagine seeing those guys on Real Madrid, just as you would never imagine seeing a Sergio Ramos, a Cristiano Ronaldo, a, um, how would I say now, even like a Toni Kroos, Casemiro, uh, or going back, a Raul, a a Roberto Carlos, you would never imagine seeing those guys. Um, Fernando Hierro, you would never imagine seeing, seeing, seeing those guys in a Barcelona shirt because they become icons of their team. Whether they go somewhere else is, is different, you know, like Cristiano or other players, but um, they would never go to their most diehard rival. So all in all, that was my take on today's news. I think it was really cool. Like I said, I'm a, I, I, be, I constantly become fall in and out of love with Sergio Ramos. I mean, I'm a huge fan of his. You can see that there's a poster back here of Sergio Ramos. Uh, that's that poster that's back there. I have the shirt. Um, that's like his profile, this picture what, right over here. That's like his profile right there. So I'm a huge Sergio Ramos fan. I think he's amazing and I would love him to stay. Um, but whatever happens, happens, you know, and I think he's going to be a legend no matter what. But it's really kind of a it was it was interesting to see this kind of take. Uh, it opened my eyes in a lot of ways um, to what's possible right now with new media like all of us. 
and possibly interviewing people and, and hopefully growing this channel to where we one one day have somebody of that stature on here and representing us talking about Madrid or something like that. So uh, it's cool to open the lines and the uh, interesting to see that, you know, these players are paying attention to all of these little channels and, you know, YouTubers and Twitch and everything, you know. So uh it was an interesting day for for news and that is my news for today i haven't spoken to you guys in a long time in this form so that is my news from real madrid hub make sure you subscribe to the channel real madrid hub on youtube and also make sure you subscribe to my podcast eat nada mas podcast available everywhere podcasts are found and on social media as e nada Ma, at e nada mas podcast twitter instagram facebook all right thank you guys and we'll talk again soon